Ben Simmons and James Harden addressed the media just over 24 hours ago. Neither player has an official date for their new team debuts, but with wins at a premium as the season enters the final third, pressure is mounting on them both, as well as several other players across the jam-packed Eastern Conference. So, Stephen A. Smith, which player in the East is under the most pressure? For me, it's James Harden. I think when you consider what Daryl Morey gave up for him, obviously it's Ben Simmons, it's Seth Curry, it's Andre Drummond. But he gave the Brooklyn Nets, Daryl Morey, everything they needed. And I believe that Brooklyn is better because of it. What you're saying is if you're Daryl Morey, who's been an executive for more than a decade in the NBA, widely respected, not perfect, but widely respected, what you're saying is regardless of how much better it made KD, Kyrie, and the Brooklyn Nets, James Harden arriving in Philadelphia supersedes all of that. When you couple that with James Harden's troubles in the postseason, even though he averages 28, 7, and 5, but only shoot 42% from the field, about 32% from three-point range, lesser numbers in terms of efficiency come playoff time compared to what he does in the regular season. You combine that with what Daryl Morey is basically saying by waiting this long and acquiring him and making Brooklyn stronger, you're saying James Harden supersedes all of that. James Harden is under the most I'll take Harden as well for different reasons. How about the fact that he got everything he want now, including quitting on two teams? Yeah. First and foremost, he has it in ownership with Michael Rubin, who's down for the culture. He has it in Daryl Morey, who he had in Houston. And by the way, ran off CP3 from there, who now plays on the best team in basketball. He has Joel Embiid, an MVP caliber big, and he got the streets of Philadelphia. Some of the greatest off the floor have roamed those streets. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> Will Chamberlain, Dr. J, Allen Iverson. Charles He's going to fit right in. Yeah. He'll fit right in. What does he have to do to justify it? What, what will the Sixers win? Win, you win what? Off. How much? Win how much? He hasn't won. Kyrie and KD have won, right? I mean, so there's no pressure on them. I mean, there's some. I, I want to say Kyrie, but you can't say Kyrie because he's won. If he stops playing tomorrow, he's got a championship. James Harden doesn't. And he's had a number of cracks at it. Like Stephen A. mentioned, he has performed a, at a substandard level in the playoffs relative to the regular season. And he sat there at the dais when he was introduced, and he said, this is where I want it to be. Yeah. This is the perfect place. I now get to play with guys who really want to win, which basically said, I know he wasn't talking about KD. No, sorry. When he, definitely. Look, he definitely wasn't talking about, about KD. Kyrie. He but was talking about Kyrie. It was a bad look. All right, it was bad form, and the pressure is on him. He's joining a guy who is in the top three at, at, at minimum for MVP. It's on Harden. What does he have to do to justify it, Stephen A? You're the one, you said it on first take today, that he's under the most pressure he's ever been in. Do they have to win a championship for him to overcome this, to justify they have, the They deal? have to win the East, which means they have to be better than Brooklyn. Remember, you made a deal. It's not like you made a deal just to make Brooklyn better. You made a deal with Brooklyn knowing they already had KD and Kyrie and that filling in the pieces, an elite defender, a playmaker, an athletic playmaker at that, another shooter, somebody to buffer their front line on the front court with Andre Drummond in terms of rebounding. But every weakness that the Brooklyn Nets had, you basically said, I know these pieces are going to help them, but I don't care because James Harden is worth it. And with James Harden saying what he said, like Wilbon pointed out, in this Philadelphia 76ers press, conference he basically put the world on notice this is where he wanted to be he knew that Tillman Fertitta yeah. and the Houston Rockets were not going to make a deal with Daryl Morey in Philadelphia because Daryl Morey had left them abruptly this is what it's all about this is what you wanted all along you got it you got to deliver and he's been noted as one of the greatest players of all time with the top 75 but here's the other thing not yeah, only has he flamed out in the playoffs but some really bizarre losses. Yeah. Having like yes. 13 turnovers one time with the little B curse. And then against the San Antonio Spurs Did when you? he was looking disinterested. Yeah. And so now he gets a chance to reinvent himself, Greeny. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to have some theater. It's going to be very interesting to watch. I mean, this trade did a lot of things for the NBA. It certainly made the last third of this season fascinating. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.